researchers, well, such as Sitchin and perhaps people like Michael Tsarian who would say you've got, you've got um, Atlantis hundreds of thousands of years ago and then Mu maybe 800,000 years ago, these alleged continents which suddenly also had advanced knowledge. Do you, do you buy into that or are you just looking strictly at sort of the last six or seven thousand yeah, years? Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at, at the at the historical record right. and finding an explanation for that historical record. Right, right. Now, um, you also talk about the five-pointed star because this uh, you think could be a symbol of this secret knowledge. Just tell us about that. Well, I think it re basically refers to Aldebaran uh, because often the, the pentagram is, uh, is, is a red star and mm -hmm. Aldebaran is probably the most famous of, of, of the red stars. Right. And uh, the apple is often used as a symbol of knowledge from the tree of yeah. the tree from Adam and Eve, and also the fallen on Isaac Newton's head. Mm. And there's a, you reckon there's a secret thing coded inside an apple? Just tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that Pythagoras was famous for uh, for introducing that notion, but I think it was actually existed a lot earlier than Pythagoras but basically if you cut an apple across halfways instead of through the core mm -hmm. then the pips form a five-pointed star right uh, and also very quickly the tannin will turn the apple a sort of a reddish brown color right and so if you, to be a member of the Pythagorean society that's how you introduced yourself you basically you were handed an apple and a knife and if you cut it the right way they knew that you the, were part of the right. secret. So it's a bit like a Masonic handshake. But basically, yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> and interestingly, the Vril Society used exactly the same uh, right. method. Fascinating. I'm talking to Derek Willis, whose hypothesis um, states that there could be an ancient alien satellite in orbit uh, around the Earth. Now, you think it's in a polar orbit. Just tell us what a polar orbit is. Well, Basically, it passes over the north and south pole. Right. So it's travelling in a northerly and southerly so direction. It's, so it's going at 90 degrees to say the yeah. moon. And, and do many of the other satellites that we've put up go in polar orbits, or do most of them go in horizontal orbits? What, what's, how does that compare? Well, do most satellites that are intended to observe the Earth will mm -hmm. go to a polar orbit. Right. Because when the Earth turns, it will turn beneath the orbit. Yes. So the satellite can cover the entire Earth. Now, we mentioned earlier in the interview Werner von Braun, mm. and he was famous for developing the V2 rocket, and you think some of that evidence is important for your hypothesis, yeah? yeah. So just explain the significance of, of rocket development in the 1930s and 40s. Well, the V2 was obviously designed uh, as a, a, a missile and uh, to, to use against uh, uh, Britain, but after the end of the war, 1946-1947, there was uh, a spate of sightings known as the ghost rockets of Scandinavia. Yes, Timothy Good's written a lot about yeah, those. Yeah. yeah, and I've kind of spent a, a lot of time actually visiting Norway to interview some people about, about really? these things. Yeah, right. And they fall into three categories. There's either these very small rockets, which are about seven or eight feet long, or there's very large rockets that are 60 or 70 feet long. Mm -hmm. And there's the third type is this sort of a, a winged dart thing. Now, right. the kind of, people think them, there could be UFOs or whatever, but w what I recently discovered is that the, the, wing, the winged dart was actually a, a real missile being developed in, secretly by Sweden. Okay. So I took that point as meaning, well, yes, the other uh, types of rockets were probably real as well. Right, and so what my my conclusion on that is that right at the end of the war, the the Nazis uh, with uh, Heinrich Himmler yeah. were using what attempting to use V twos to to shoot the ancient envoy out of orbit, right, in order to acquire the uh, the knowledge that was right. That was it was not possible to cover everything in the hypothesis in a one hour long show. I will therefore give a brief summary of some of the most interesting evidence. Assuming the Nazis were indeed trying to shoot down the alleged ancient alien satellite, in order to do this, the exact orbital path would need to be known in order to know where to fire their missile. I asked Derek whether he thought anyone had determined 
what the orbital path might be. He explained that the satellite orbit could have been encoded in ancient monuments, such as the Great Pyramids. It's well known that the Great Pyramid is aligned perfectly along north-south. So too is a satellite in a polar orbit. Derek's original idea that the orbit is polar goes back to the mythology about the planet Nibiru. This planet, which has not yet been discovered, is known in mythology as the planet of the crossing. He deduced from this that Nibiru might form a cross with the ecliptic, where the other planets are aligned, which means it could be in a north-south polar orbit. He also contends that mythology is full of numbers, the most important being 12, and this number is related to how many lunations or moon cycles there are in a year. He concluded that if you were going to leave a satellite hidden in plain view, as it were, they would have encoded some kind of information so that people would know where it was. He deduced from that that the orbital period of the ancient envoy would probably be one-twelfth of a day, in the same way that the moon is one-twelfth of a year. Once you have the orbital period, it is then possible to calculate the satellite's altitude. As mentioned earlier, Derek believes the Nazis were trying to shoot down the ancient envoy using the V-2 rocket. He believes this quest was taken on by the Americans after Operation Paperclip. Following the Second World War, the Nazi rocket scientists moved to the US and took their knowledge with them. In 1947, there was a very mysterious rocket flight from a US aircraft carrier in the Atlantic Ocean. It was a test of a V-2 missile. The V-2 used a liquid propellant which takes hours to prepare and is therefore not normally suited to being launched from a ship. Derek described this test as highly unusual. The missile flight was in September 1947 and was right beneath the flight of the path where Derek suspects the ancient envoy is situated. He suspects the US were trying to knock the envoy out of the sky just as the Nazis had attempted to a few years earlier. When satellites started being launched in the 1950s, one particular satellite project in 1958 could provide further evidence that the U.S. were trying to observe the ancient satellite. Project Pilot was the launch of a tiny satellite which weighed just around a pound into a polar orbit fitted with an infrared camera. Could this satellite have been seeking the ancient envoy? Rumors have circulated for decades about an alleged alien satellite called Black Knight. Information about this started to surface in the 1950s, including newspaper reports. Derek believes the story about Black Knight is partly true and refers to the ancient envoy in his hypothesis, but that the story has been mixed with less credible information over the years. Other evidence which Derek points to, to back up his hypothesis, is the specification of the NASA Space Shuttle. During the development phases, the U.S. military insisted that the space shuttle must have the capability to return from a polar orbit carrying something weighing 15 tons, even though there was nothing publicly known about in a polar orbit weighing 15 tons. This requirement held up the shuttle program for years because both size and power requirements had to be increased. The U.S. military were also planning to launch their own shuttles from Vandenberg Air Force Base into a polar orbit. Derek's take on this is that they were intending to fly the military shuttle to the ancient envoy, put it in the shuttle's cargo bay, and fly it back to the Earth. Derek suspects the ancient envoy is highly advanced and might be capable of defending itself against attempts to take it out of orbit. He suspects the ancient envoy is still in its polar orbit above the Earth. His ambitious project is to prove the ancient alien satellite exists by attempting to film it using civilian satellites. An American company called Interorbital Systems produces and launches small satellites called CubeSats which can be owned by members of the public. These satellites can be fitted with infrared cameras and send images back to the Earth from Earth orbit. I was quite surprised when Derek told me that there is a civilian satellite program which allows anyone to have their own small satellite in orbit around the Earth. Derek believes one of these satellites could be placed in a one-twelfth day polar orbit to search for the ancient envoy. To find out more, visit Derek's website, aldebaran-project.com.
cubesat.org. And this is the basic CubeSat. It's about four inches square. Yeah. It has uh, solar panels, it has camera, it has electronics. Computer. And that's the actual size of that's the thing the size that it, goes yeah. in orbit around the Earth. Yeah, that, yeah. and there's, there's been uh, a couple of hundred of them launched so far. Interorbit will actually they provide the kit which you then assemble and then they, they do the launch. But you can also buy kits from other companies mm -hmm. and, and have them hitch a ride on, uh, on other rocket right. launches. Because one of the things about the, the ancient envoy is that mm -hmm. it's, uh, it will behave like a black body in that it'll absorb light of all different wavelengths, right. but it'll only emit light at uh, infrared wavelengths. Right. So the camera on board would be an infrared camera. I see. So the, the company puts them into a, an orbit that's about 300 kilometers high, but, it, but the inch envoy is much higher than that. Right. So it needs to be raised to a higher orbit. And that's what this device here yeah. is for. Just yeah. tell us what that is then, Derek. Well, that's basically it, it, it's a, a rocket motor which is powered by uh, water. Right. Uh, just electrolyze the water, split right. in the hydrogen and oxygen using the, the electricity. Right. Uh, and, the then, and then it's burned, is it? Is it, is it a jet? Burned. Yeah, it's a jet. And that will raise it to the, the order that you require. Right. So, so you're, you're proposing to um, get some funds together to, uh, to buy or to launch one of these right. so it can then go and search for the ancient envoy. Yes, that's the idea. Yes. Right. So have you, got, have you got a fund set up for that, uh, Derek? Well, it, it, the sale of the book. That's, uh, the sale of the book. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I better plug it. <laughs> right, so, Which, I mean, now is it actually in print now? Because this, uh, this copy that Derek gave me it was a, sort of a draft. Wasn't yes. It? Well, that's what I call the manuscript edition. Right. Uh, which I've, I've probably sold a couple hundred copies of that now, but I've, uh, I'm currently negotiating with a publisher to have like a proper version. Right. Printed. Okay. Well, what do you say to people who say? How on earth is a civilian going to find this ancient envoy when the likes of NASA and probably the Air Force and other NSA would get were bound to get it first? Is it not a? Do you see what I mean? Or might they not have already captured it? No, I don't think they have. Uh, I think after, when they attempted to do it in 1947, see, because how they tried to knock that wall, but this is what I believe, is they set off a charge. Mm -hmm. Which would slow it down. You know, mm -hmm. if you think the expanding gases are going to slow it down. Right. But it, it's not a stupid device, so it knew exactly what was going on. All right. <laughs> so I think it's kind of, uh, you know, I mean, it's like firing a pea shooter at it, really, when you right. think about okay. it. Right, okay. Because you think it's quite heavy, this thing. Well, well, not so much in terms of its weight, just in terms of its defense systems, right. things like that. Right. You know, and uh, for instance, I think that the Explorer 1 satellite did actually vaporize it. Because again, they tried to get close. I mean, there's a great mystery to America's first spy satellite. Right. Because they've never properly explained why it disappeared. Right.